All right, uh, let's try to prove the Fermat's theorem. Here's the statement. If f prime of c exists, and f of c is a local maximum or local minimum, then f prime of c must be equal to zero. All right, so uh, let's prove this. I'm going to do a local maximum case first. All right, and I'm going to start with f prime of c. Since f prime of c exists, the limit definition has a value. So I'm going to put the uh, left-hand limit here and also the right-hand limit there. All right, so I'm going to look at the left-hand limit first. Since h is approaching 0 from the negative side, we know that the h is negative. Since f of c is a local maximum, f of c plus h minus f of c is going to be less than or equal to 0. All right? When you have negative number divided by negative number, then you're going to have a positive number. And the numerator could be 0, so 0 divided by negative number is still 0. So it's going to be uh, greater than or equal to 0. Right? How about the right-hand limit? Right? Since h approaches 0 from the positive side, h is actually positive. Right? But the numerator is exactly the same. It's still going to be less than or equal to 0. Right? If you do something less than or equal to 0 divided by positive number, it's still going to be less than or equal to 0. So therefore, f prime of c must be between 0 and 0. And only possibility is f prime of c equal to 0. All right, how about the local minimum case? All right, what's the difference? All right, so the h is the same. And, but the numerators there has to change inequality. So I'm going to flip the inequalities on the numerators there. Then you get this, right? But therefore, f prime of c is still between 0 and 0. So we have the same conclusion, f prime of c must be equal to 0, right? So here is the local minimum case, and here is the local maximum case. And either way, uh, we could conclude that the f prime of c must be equal to zero. All right, that's it. I hope that uh, this was clear.